Good afternoon. This is Joe Forward, legal writer for the State Bar of Wisconsin. And today I'm here with Professor Michelle DeStefano. She is a professor of law at the University of Miami Law School in Florida. She is also the founder of Law Without Walls. Um, and she is uh, an author of a book called Legal Upheaval, a guide to creativity, collaboration, and innovation in law. And she will be a featured speaker at the upcoming State Bar of Wisconsin annual meeting and conference. That's June 10 and 11. Um, uh, and that conference is virtual this year. And uh, Professor DeStefano will be a featured speaker. Professor, how are you? Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, how's it going? How are you doing? I'm doing great, Joe. And I'm really thrilled to be a part of this programming. Although I have to admit, I really wish it was in in person. I love Wisconsin. Oh, you do? Okay, so you've, you've been to Wisconsin before? Many times. So when I lived in Chicago, I spent a lot of time uh, in Wisconsin hiking and mountain biking. And as well, even before that, I had a boyfriend in college who lived in Green Bay. So I've been to many uh, Packers games and really got to know Wisconsin well. Oh, that's great. Well, we'll have to have you back when we can be in person again. Um, so, so Professor, uh, so just can you tell us a little bit about um, uh, Law Without Walls, how that started and what that involves uh, with your work? Sure. So Law Without Walls is a part virtual experiential learning program that leverages multidisciplinary teams and collaboration. So we put together multidisciplinary teams of lawyers, business professionals, entrepreneurs, and law and business school students. And we have them go on a three to four month innovation journey. And over that three to four months, they solve a real business of law problem assigned to them by one of our sponsors. We have corporate legal departments like Spotify, HSBC. We have law firm sponsors like Pinsett Masons and White and Case. We have law company sponsors like United Lex and I Manage, and the list goes on. And these sponsors find a real challenge for their department or firm, and the teams hack on it over three to four months. But the number one reason why people do Law Without Walls is not for the innovation at the end. It's for the change in the mindset, skill sets, and behaviors that happens by honing that DNA of an innovator over those a uh, few months on the cycle. Okay. And so why is um, why do you think that that change in mindset is important for the legal profession at the, at this stage in 2021? Well, the focus for lawyers has really changed from what we do in terms of our legal expertise to how we do it. We are being challenged by our clients whether you are a solo lawyer, a government lawyer, law a government lawyer, a family lawyer, a lawyer for a big law, doesn't matter. Our clients are challenging us to provide service in a very client-centric way and a holistic way, a way that includes um, the, con the context around the legal problem, which means as lawyers, we need to be chameleons. We need to be able to deliver our advice in a business context, in a personal context that takes a multidisciplinary approach and in the language that our clients want to hear it. And I don't mean in terms of Spanish or English or Portuguese. I mean in tone, length, and content. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think that's true for solo and small firm practitioners too? I know in Wisconsin, we have a large majority of our attorneys here are solo and small firm practitioners. What kinds of things can they learn from you uh, uh, about these, these types of skills? I think it's even more important for solo lawyers and small lawyers because, first of all, if you're a solo lawyer, you're doing everything. <laughs> you know, you're running a business, you're running a legal practice, and your clients come to you with problems that although, yes, they ask you to be their lawyer. The reality is today there is no such thing as a solely legal problem. If you're a solo family attorney, the problems that your client brings you involve their family and involve a lot more than just whatever legal aspect they're asking of you. Same with if you're working with a small business. A small business has a lot of things to consider in addition to the legal problems, the public relations, the regulations, the 
ethics. There's a lot of, there's a lot going on in the marketplace and it unfortunately is not just a legal aspect of, of uh, the problem that lawyers have to help their clients solve. Right. And, and Professor, um, I know you've done research on these types of issues for many years. What, um, what led you to, to um, law without walls and why are, you, why are you passionate? What made you passionate about this area? Well, my background is a little bit different than a lot of other professors because I spent eight years in marketing and advertising. I worked at Leo Burnett in Chicago and I worked at Levi Strauss and Company out in San Francisco before I went to law school. So I have a very business minded approach to law. And when I entered the legal marketplace and especially when I became a professor, I was frustrated with all the walls, right? All the barriers, all the things that prevented us from giving this holistic advice, whether it's the UPL laws or the hierarchies that exist between professors and students or between schools of different rank or lawyers of different um, from different firms or lawyers within of different levels. And I believe and had been trained in a multidisciplinary approach and the power and importance of diversity and all these walls were preventing that and law without walls. <laughs> law without walls is exactly that designed to break down those walls in in every way possible and in fact we are i think the most diverse culturally uh, generation wise language wise um community i think in the law marketplace michelle de stefano she's a professor of law at the university of miami she's the founder of law without walls we're going to see her june 10th and 11th in uh, at the uh, annual meeting and conference. It's a virtual event this year. Professor, thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you in June. Won't miss it, can't wait. Thanks, Joe.